Hey everyone, welcome back to Mechanics of Materials. And in this video, we're going to be talking about allowable stress and the basic design relationship. And we'll be taking our first uh, foray, giving you an introduction into engineering design. And as you know, engineers design lots of things. Uh, engineers, civil engineers, and mechanical and bioengineers design buildings, beam components, column components, uh, piping components, piping systems, shafts, uh, uh, um, stents, uh, oh gosh, prosthetics, a lot, of, a lot of things, right? And and really, you know, the idea behind design, design, is to, you know, in engineering design, is to select material and geometry, okay, like cross-sectional area, steel, aluminum, composite material, you know, select the material and geometry to satisfy performance requirements, uh, cost, and nowadays even things like sustainability, right? And when I say performance, you know, we're talking about safety. You know, is it is it safe enough? Is it is the material not going to fail? Material failure. You know, we're we're going to prevent that so that we prevent collapse of the whole system. And then cost. Is it optimal? Optimizing the material use, right? Is it constructible or buildable manufacturing wise? Is it easy to manufacture? So manufacturing, you know, construction costs, those are all related. But here we're going to, you know, as it relates to mechanics and materials, our design is focused on, you know, having a material and selecting a proper amount of geometry so that we stay within stress limits. And, and really when we talk about materials you know we, we want to know what is the limit of that material okay and that and really that is where uh you know material testing and 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 having knowledge of your material and what your margin of safety or safety factor uh, comes into play so for instance let's take let's just say i'm a i'm like oh whoa 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 let's say i'm an elevator designer right here right i'm an elevator designer Bam, I design elevators and I design this elevator and I have some cables that, that go all over the place like this. And, and I test my elevator designs and I, what I notice is that my elevator fails when I load it. So the cables here fail, so I'll put F fail. They fail at around a load of about 4,000 pounds. Okay, so when I test what I designed with the material that I've used, maybe some steel cable and all these connections right here, I notice it fails at about 4,000 pounds. And so when I, when I specify a, a margin of safety, I want to make sure ensure that I never reach this level of 4,000 pounds. And so what I'm going to say is, hey, here's what I allow you, the user, to, you, to have. Okay? I'm going to say that the occupancy limit of this elevator has to be less than or equal to, or let's say the, the, what we can allow is equal to, let's keep it equal to, what is fa the failure load that I've measured and tested, uh, you know, based on the material that I've chosen, divided by a factor of safety, okay, some margin of safety. And so, so I might say that, oh, for all elevators, the occupancy limit must be a, a factor of safety of two. Uh, two, so I'm going to say that you can't put more than 2,000 pounds or people cannot come into an elevator and weigh a total of more than 2,000 pounds. Otherwise, the elevator is going to fail. Now, failure can be defined as snapping of the cables, yielding of the cables, a mechanical malfunction. Who knows, right? All kinds of things. But here in, in mechanics and materials, we're going to relate that to some sort of material failure. So when we relate it to material failure, this F fail relation, this this relationship right here, between what a uh, and a failure condition and then an allowable condition that the engineer you specify right here is this failure condition is like a material property, okay, that we're going to have in mechanics and materials. For instance, this failure we might define failure as yielding of steel or aluminum, and we'll say that 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 F fail is the yield strength sigma y the yield strength of a material and then the margin of safety is is you know some standard you know, that or some limit you know that we're going to have 
that we're going to say that we can accept it. And usually this factor of safety is established by, by some sort of guidelines, uh, by industry guidelines, you know, things like the AISC uh, building specifications for steel construction, ASME boiler and pressure vessel code, uh, you know, experience. Uh, uh, and some of these safety factors are, are established based on probability and studying the, the probability of failure and limiting the probability of failure. And so here, so for now, let's say that in terms of a material that we have, so for a given material, let's say like uh, a steel or just in general, one of the limits or one of the ways that we can fail is by the normal stress. And so we have a, you know, the, the allowable normal stress. So if we want to put this back into stress, allowable stress, the allowable normal stress is going to be equal to the failure stress. And whatever I define as failure, it could be yield stress, it could be a rupture, it could be, you know, the normal, some sort of normal stress measurement. So some, some property of the material, again, probably I can't emphasize this enough. It's a material property and then divided by some factor of safety and Sigma allow is essentially what we, what we, the engineers say, Hey, just use it up to this limit, even though that we know there's some margin for error or so, you know, some margin of safety and. And normal stress is, is just one way, you know, by normal stress is one way that a material can fail. Something can also fail in shear. And so we would have a, an allowable shear stress as well. And then we'd have a, the, the, you know, some she, either shear yield, shear rupture, you know, for a bolt or something. And then as a, a margin of safety or a factor of safety to, to minimize or to control what we can allow. Right. And obviously the factor of safety because we're making sigma allow less than sigma failure, okay, the failure load or whatever it is, it, this is going to be typically greater than one. Okay, that's what you'll you'll normally see. This factor safety is greater than one. All right, so so here we we've given you a a, a feel for the allowable stress. In the next video, uh, that's part two of this. I, I we'll we'll put this into the basic design relationship and talk about how to get areas out of this and select, you know, geometric areas actually specify how much material we need to satisfy a condition. Okay. See you in the next video.